Hey gamers, welcome back to uh, my gaming channel, Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater. I'm your host, the Mickey. We're back in the saddle with Adventure, with the adventure game, Ben Jordan, case number 8, Relics of the Past. We're watching an adventure, a flashback adventure, with Arthur Jordan and Percival Quentin Jones in the 1920s hey, of a bull session. in Romania. Yes, yeah, Arthur. We're going to have an encounter with perhaps How are you holding uh, up, old some boy? vampires, no complaints so far. or the supernatural at least. How are you holding uh, up, old I, boy? I'm recording this well, after the video, so st so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Any suggestions regarding our next move? With the it would probably be best to find some place to spend the night. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Hello, my good man. Am I correct in guessing this is the town inn? Uh, yes, sir. That is correct. Welcome to the Hotel Dracula. If you wish to rent a room, it would be 500 lei a night. Sounds keen. What do you say, Purse? Seeing as this is our only option, I think we would do well to stay here. A room for me and uh, one for my associate, please. Yeah, very good. Names? Arthur Jordan and Percy Jones. Jordan and Jones. Excellent. Again, welcome to the Hotel Dracula. May your stay here be pleasant. Enjoying yourself, sir? Yes, it is a good night to come out and drink with friends. I have to say, this inn is certainly cozy. It is an excellent place to get away from the troubles of life. This is why I am in here every night. Say there, could we have a chat? I don't see why not. Tell me about yourself. Well, I am Dragomir, a simple farmer. There is really not very much interesting about me. What do you know about this town? I have lived here my entire life. Many people like to come here to learn of Dracula. We see many people from many places. I like this. I appreciate your time. You are most welcome. Pardon me, but could we talk a moment? Of course, young man. What do you need? Tell me about yourself. My name is Florian Gogolasa, and I am the town butcher. My shop is located on the west end of town, if you decide you would like to buy some meat. I lead a simple life. During the day I work at my shop, and at night I come here to drink and converse with my friends and visitors to the town. What can you tell me about the town? We have a rich history, although most of it is very bloody. Vlad the Impaler was born here. He gained quite an infamous reputation, as I'm sure you are aware. That's what I hear. The best way to experience Sigisora is to walk the streets and take in the environment. Just be careful where you go and when you go there. Thanks for the chat. Think nothing of it. Mind if we speak for a bit? Uh, no, sir. What do you need? You enjoy being an innkeeper? Yes, sir. 
It is a very rewarding job. I get to meet people from all over the world and hear their stories. I guess that explains why your English is so good. That is correct. Many English-speaking travelers come through here. What can you tell me about this joint? The Hotel Dracula has been in my family for several years. We do quite well. Of course it helps to be the only hotel in town. I can imagine. So why the Dracula theme? Our town is a popular tourist destination because it is the birthplace of Vlad Tepes. He was better known as Vlad the Impaler, and was... The inspiration for Bram Stoker's novel? Uh, indeed, sir. You are already familiar with the local history? Yes, I have my own personal guide, it would seem. Only trying to help, Arthur. Knowledge is the best defense, after all. Having you around is like wearing a full suit of armor, then. You know, I couldn't help but notice the dried brambles hanging on all the doors in town. Is that some kind of Romanian tradition? Uh, no, sir. That is... Yes? Uh, it is for protection. Protection? Against what? It is not good to speak of it, sir. Come now, what can be so horrible that you can't speak of it? The Headless Vampire. Did you say... Headless Vampire? Yes, it is an unfortunate plague upon our town. Tell me more. I do not know many details. You would do better asking the other townspeople. Although, I am not sure they would be willing to discuss it. This is a very delicate matter, and to talk about it with a foreigner... I'll worry about the other folks, just tell me what you know. Very well. The Headless Vampire is, as the name implies, a vampire without a head. Actually, it is only the head which flies around and bites victims. How does that work, exactly? Uh, I am not sure. I myself have never encountered it, you see. But Dragomir, the farmer over there with the black hat, he claims his sister was bitten by the vampire. I see. Thanks for the information. Ah, oh, you are welcome. But please, sir, do not go looking for the vampire. Several adventurers have come here before you and tried finding out more. None have returned to tell the tale. Seeking the vampire leads only to misery and death. I appreciate your concern, but my friend and I are used to this sort of thing. Mm, you are? Ever hear of the London Werewolf or the Belfast Banshee? Mm, I'm afraid not. That's because Percy and I investigated and disproved both. I'm sure we can take care of your vampire problem. If that is the case, I wish you luck. Perhaps our town will finally be rid of this nuisance once and for all. We'll try our best. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Say there, could we have a chat? I don't see why not. I hear tell you know something about this headless vampire. Yes, I do. However, I do not like to speak of it. Come now, I understand it's a sore subject, but surely you can tell me something. I am afraid not. Do not take this as an insult, but I do not like talking about these things with outsiders. But my associate and I are well versed in local legends. We've even managed to deal with a few in different parts of Europe. Isn't there any way I can gain your trust? There may be. If what you claim is true, there is something you can do for me. I'm listening. North of the town square, near the cemetery, is the Sigiswara clock tower. My house is located next to it. Every night when I walk home, I hear strange noises coming from the top of the clock tower. I hear these terrible noises in the night, and they do not let me sleep. I think there is the spirit of a lost child up there, because the wailing is awful. Also, the clock has stopped working ever since this spirit appeared. Nobody has dared to go up and fix it, because they are too frightened. You must go up to the tower and help this spirit. If you do this, you will have no trouble with the vampire, and I will tell you all you want to know. Sounds easy enough. I'll have your so-called spirit taken care of before you finish your next beer. I appreciate your time. You are most welcome.
Hey, Burst, let's have a bull session. Yeah, it's Arthur. This whole headless vampire thing sounds pretty spooky. I'm sure it will turn out to be some sort of hoax. Perhaps some local townsperson playing tricks. If that's the case, they've certainly done a good job of pulling one over on everyone around here. Any suggestions regarding our next move? I think we should find out more about this spirit the farmer claims is haunting the clock tower. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Pardon me, but could we talk a moment? Of course, young man. What do you need? Thanks for the chat. Think nothing of it. Spooky weather we're having, eh? Nah, it is always like that this time of year. Mind if we speak for a bit? Uh, no, sir. What do you need? Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Hey, Burst, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? I think we should find out more about this spirit the farmer claims is haunting the clock tower. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Hey, Burst, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? I think we should find out more about this spirit the farmer claims is haunting the clock tower. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Think you can handle a little climb first? We'll find out when we reach the top. That wasn't so bad. Cool, speak for yourself. Well, I don't see any child spirits up here, do you? No, but I do hear that noise the farmer mentioned. Quite unsettling it is, too. There has to be a reasonable explanation for it. Perhaps some further investigation is required.
Hey, Bruce, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Think you can give me a hand here? Certainly. What do you need? This beam is stuck in the machinery, and I need your help to pull it out. Very well. On three. One. Two. That a boy. Guess that takes care of the spirit problem. Indeed. The farmer will be glad to hear about this, I'm sure. First, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? We should tell the farmer the truth about the spirit in the clock tower. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Say there, could we have a chat? I don't see why not. I have good news for you, Dragomir. It turns out the clock tower isn't haunted after all. It isn't? Nope. There was a beam that had come loose and caught itself in one of the gears. That's what was causing the clock to stop working, as well as the noises. Ah, yes, that does make sense. Now, I feel foolish. Perhaps I should not be so eager to blame problems on the supernatural. Not all of them, anyway. This other one sounds like the real McCoy. Now could you please tell me what you know about the Headless Vampire? Yes. My sister was bitten by the vampire. What happened? She was walking alone at night in the cemetery. I, I told her not to do this. She knows it is dangerous. But she did not listen, and she was attacked by vampire. Is she alright? Yes. She got lucky. The bite was not deep. She was able to escape, but told me what she had seen. It was unmistakably the Headless Vampire. What else do you know about it? Not much, I am afraid. According to the legend, the vampire is a woman who used to live in this town. You should ask my friend Florian here. He knows much about the legend of the vampire. You mentioned your sister's vampire bite wasn't very deep. Does that make any sort of difference? Yes. If vampire bites you, it does not mean you become a vampire. The vampire must bite you and drink your blood in order for this to happen. If vampire bites you but does not drink your blood, you become weak for a few days but nothing else happens. This is why it is important to try and escape vampires as soon as possible. Interesting information. I'll keep it in mind. I appreciate your time. You are most welcome. 
Pardon me, but could we talk a moment? Of course, young man. What do you need? Your friend Dragomir says you know something about the Headless Vampire. Correct, I do. The Headless Vampire is not what you might think. Instead of a body with no head, it is the head of a vampire which floats in the air seeking victims. From the neck hangs its entrails, like a bunch of tentacles. The vampire will often trap its victims using the entrails as a restraint, then go in for the bite. Jeepers creepers, that sounds like something I wouldn't want to meet. Yes, it is an unpleasant sight to behold. This is why all the doors have dried brambles on them. The vampire's entrails are sensitive, and it fears getting them caught on the sharp points of the brambles. Hanging them on doors keeps the vampire away from our homes. Also, it is said that to kill the vampire, one must find its headless body and place sharp objects in the neck wound. This way, when the head reattaches, the entrails will be cut and the vampire will die. That's some useful information to have. Do you know anything about the vampire's history? A bit. The legend has existed for quite some time. Do tell. According to the story, the vampire was originally a woman. She was unfaithful to her husband, and when he found out, it infuriated him. As punishment, he stuffed her into a barrel and sealed her in. Sounds like a loving fellow. The young lady tried screaming for help, but no one came. Desperate, she shifted around in the barrel until her legs were behind her head, pointing up. She kicked the top of the barrel as hard as she could, trying to open it and free herself. She succeeded, but unfortunately, she kicked with such force that she caused her head to go flying off as well. Oh my. With her head went her insides, and since she committed the sin of adultery, she was doomed to roam the earth as an undead. That's quite a story. Any idea who the woman was? No, but I do know she lived in this town. You might consider searching the town records to see if you can get any information about her, if you desire it. Thanks. I just might do that. Thanks for the chat. Think nothing of it. Mind if we speak for a bit? Uh, no, sir. What do you need? Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Mind if we speak for a bit? Uh, no, sir. What do you need? Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Good evening, sir. Pardon the intrusion, but my associate and I are new in town and just having a look around. I see. This town hall 
I am record keeper. English is not so good, but if you need help, I give. Thank you. We may just take you up on that offer. Excuse me, fella. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. Yes, I do my best. Tell me about yourself, friend. I am town record keeper. My job is to keep record of all births, deaths, and marriages in town. You need to find the records of people in Sigisora? You come to see me. I have history of town going back to last century. A pretty impressive collection, I must say. What can you tell me about the town? Small town. Not much happened here. We are simple people. We live a simple life. Visitors come to see Castle Dracula, but not much else. You don't say Castle Dracula? Yes, Castle of Vlad Tepes. Inspiration for Dracula. Our town is famous for it. I'd like to look up someone in your town records, if that's all right. Yes, of course. What is name of person you are looking for? Actually, I haven't got any names to look up. You let me know when you do. What can you tell me about this headless vampire everyone seems to be all in a lather about? It is bad luck to speak of these things. A local town woman died many years ago. Came back as a vampire. If you are out at night, you can become her next victim. This is why everyone stays indoors. Any idea who she could be? No, I do not have enough information. If you can find her name, I can find a record for you. Great, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for talking with me. Goodbye. Hey, Purse, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur? Any suggestions regarding our next move? It would probably be wise to consult with the town record keeper. Better get a wiggle on. Right.
Hey, Purse, let's have a bull session. Yeah, it's Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? It would probably be wise to consult with the town record keeper. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Excuse me, fella. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. Yes, I do my best. I'd like to look up someone in your town records, if that's alright. Yes, of course. What is name of person you are looking for? I'm curious to see if you have any records from around 1903 for someone with the initials DF. Hmm. Let me see. No. I do not have anything from that date. However, there is a Dragomir Fidatov who was born in 1882. I see. Thanks for the information. Could you see if you have a record for uh, Flavia and Florian from 1917? One moment. Ah, yes. Florian Goguasa married Flavia Ionescu on June 12th. 1917. Interesting. Thanks for the help. I'm wondering if you can find a record for someone with the initials RK or ST from 1850. I will see. One moment. Hmm. There are no marriages between anyone with those initials in that year. However, there is a death. You don't say. Yes. No name. But the initials are here. R.K. died on January 19th, 1850. So who is R.K.? I do not know. I will look through records and see if I find anyone with those initials. However, it could take time. If you find name before, please tell me and I try to help. Okay, I'll try my best. Excuse me, fella. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. Yes, I do my best. I'd like to look up someone in your town records, if that's all right. Yes, of course. What is name of person you are looking for? Actually, I haven't got any names to look up. You let me know when you do. Thanks for talking with me. Goodbye. First, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? We need to find out who this RK person is. Surely looking around the town will provide a clue. Better get a wiggle on. Right.
Radu Corza. R.K. What was that, Arthur? I think we may have found the mysterious R.K. Only problem is, the date of death on this gravestone doesn't match the one the record keeper told us. Perhaps we should go back and inquire about it. Excuse me, fella. I was hoping you could answer a few questions for me. Yes, I do my best. I'd like to look up someone in your town records, if that's alright. Yes, of course. What is name of person you are looking for? Could you tell me about Radu Korza? I think he may be RK, but the date of death on his gravestone is in 1850. Let me see. Radu Korza. No, he died in 1862. However, he had a daughter, Ruxandra, born 1812, died... Uh... Hmm. Yes? Strange. I do not have record of her death. But she surely must have been the RK who died in 1850. It is possible. Strange. No official record of her death, only her initials. Is there any way to find out for sure? Maybe. Corza family house is at the top of the hill near the hotel. There is an old Corza woman who still lives there. Maybe you ask her. Thanks. I'll just go do that. Hey, Purse. Let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? We should probably pay a visit to the Corza residence. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Hey, Purse, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? We should probably pay a visit to the Corza residence. Better get a wiggle on. Right. My, this is a charming house. It looks abandoned. I can't imagine anyone would want to live here.
Hello there, Miss Corza. Yes? My name is Arthur Jordan. This is my associate, Percival Q. Jones. Pleased to meet you, Mom. We were wondering if we might be able to come in and ask you a few questions about your family. My family? How do you know my family? We've been doing a little research into the Headless Vampire and- Oh wait! You get away from here! Uh, I'm sorry if I upset you, but- Go away! Leave me alone! Well, that didn't go as planned. She does seem a bit stubborn. Perhaps it will take more than just words to convince her. Are you suggesting we club her over the head? Not quite such a violent solution, no. But I do think some action should be taken. Hey, Burst, let's have a bull session. Yes, Arthur? Any suggestions regarding our next move? We should probably pay a visit to the Corza residence. Better get a wiggle on. Right. Miss, if you please just... I said go! Now hold on just a minute. It's very important that we speak with you. I have nothing to say to you. Somehow I doubt that very much. Look, my friend and I aren't just going to give up. So, until you agree to talk with us, we're just going to keep bothering you. Fine. Enough of this foolishness. You may come inside, but please. I am an old woman. I do not have time or energy for these things. Thanks. We just want to ask you a few questions, that's all. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yes? Do you live here all by yourself? Yes, and I am not interested in dealing with the town. So, I stay here by myself. They do not bother me, and I do not bother them. Do you know Alexander Corza? I knew her, yes. She was my sister. Your sister? Were you close? We had a good relationship, yes. Until she began seeing that man. Things changed. She was not the same. And then her bastard husband killed her. My god, that's awful. Yes, it brought shame to our family. Who was the man? His name was Sorin, I believe. Soren Chalelis. What can you tell me about this Soren Trellis? He was a very strange man. Always dressed in black. He had pale skin. Very low voice. I saw him very little. My sister was happily married. But then Soren came into town. She would go off for hours. Later, I discovered it was to see him. I tried to keep it from her husband, but he saw their initials carved in a tree in town. He was very jealous, and he sealed her in a barrel as punishment. But he left her inside too long, and she suffocated and died. My sympathies, Miss Corza. This may be a sensitive topic, but do you know anything about the Headless Vampire? 
It is a terrible story the townspeople began telling after Roxandra died. They say she kicked her head off and became a floating head that drinks blood. But this is absurd. My sister died in the barrel because she could not breathe. What happened to the body? Her husband buried it. Barrel and all. I do not know where. Please do not ask me anything else. This brings back too many bad memories. I apologize, miss. I don't have any more questions about your sister. Thank you very much for your time, Miss Corza. You are welcome. Hey, Purse, let's have a bull session. Yes, yeah, Arthur. Any suggestions regarding our next move? Perhaps we should take a look around the cemetery to see if we find any clues. Better get a wiggle on. Right. It looks like this whole headless vampire thing might just be a big misunderstanding. It would seem the townspeople merely came up with a supernatural story to add to an already scandalous tale of adultery. Only one thing stands out to me. Dragomir seemed like he was on the up and up. I don't know about his sister, though. She said she'd been attacked in the cemetery. Indeed she did. Maybe we should take a look around there and see if there's a reasonable explanation for why she might have been attacked. Or fed him a line. That sounds like a reasonable course of action. This entire situation is pretty curious, wouldn't you say, Purse? Indeed. It seems a rather cut and dry case of murder. However, I fail to see where the supernatural angle comes into play. Percy, look out! My goodness, that was close. I owe you one, Arthur. Not a problem. So the Headless Vampire isn't just a local superstition after all. Quite. That Dragomir chap's sister really was lucky to escape alive. So now that we know the thing is real, we just have to figure out how to stop it. Indeed. Any ideas? For now, I think our best lead is to find out more about this Soren Trellis character. So the vampire was real after all? Indeed. And Grandpa Arthur saved you from it? That he did. Wow. That was one hell of a story. Oh, it is by no means over. But I think now would be a good time for you to get back to trying to figure out where the Cardinal has gone. So you're not going to finish the story because you think something has changed within the past hour? Yes, and time is of the essence. I really wish you'd just tell me what was going on. All in due time. I shall finish my story and tell you everything else once we've located Genovese. Okay, I'll hold you to that. Thank you. 
Hey gamers, that's all the time we have for this adventure on uh, Ben Jordan case number 8, Relics of the Past, a walkthrough on Video Gamer Services Play Theater. Stay tuned next time, I'll be continuing our adventure. Ben Jordan at the uh, Coaching Horses Bar, we'll probably talk to his gentleman sitting at the bar. Uh, I promise I'll, I'll do a much better job with the narration, I've had some problems with the recording. So, uh, we'll sit, we'll, till, that, till next time, stay frosty gamers, uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Don't forget to like, favorite, comment. Uh, share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google Plus, all those social media websites that you use on a basis. On a basis, subscribe to my gaming channel, Video Gamers Voices Play Theater, and don't forget to ring my bell. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have an awesome week. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye. Thank you.